So I've been on a mission for the last six months to find the best low profile wireless keyboard. So far I've tried pretty much all the major players from brands such as Logitech, Apple and Keychron and a while ago I got my hands on what a lot of people in my comments section have been saying is the best the Nufi Air 75. So I bought one and I was halfway through writing the review when Nufi reached out and told me about their updated V2 version with some pretty major improvements. So I'll start from the outside and work my way in and see if this keyboard is worthy of all of the hype. And I'll also talk about one major improvement with the V2 that might just make you go out and buy one of these right now. So in the box, there's a quick guide and some waifu stickers, a branded USB-C cable for charging or to connect directly to your computer, alternate Windows or Mac keycaps, and a decent keycap puller. There's also a wireless 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, a dongle housing to clip onto a cable so that you don't lose it, and some spare switches you can install into the keyboard and test out to see which one you like best. Anyway, here's the main attraction the Nufi Air 75 V2 Wireless Custom Mechanical Keyboard. Now, like the name suggests, it's a compact 75% layout, which means it sacrifices the number pad, but it is much smaller and compact and takes up less room on your desk. There is a 96% layout version as well. But a big marketing point that Nufi likes to push for the 75% version is that it can sit perfectly on top of a MacBook keyboard for typing. Now I tried it on my 14 inch MacBook Pro and it works pretty well as long as I perfectly lined up the thin rubber feet with the space between the keys. If you don't do that, it's gonna press on all the keys and it's just not gonna be a pleasant experience. Now design-wise, Nufi always has a unique approach to their keyboards. I mean, you can just instantly tell it's a Nufi keyboard. There's no obnoxious logos, it's just a simple, minimal design with a pop of color. The V2, unlike the V1, comes in three different colorways, Ionic White, Basalt Black, and Lunar Gray. Each one comes with accented key colors and the keys are now double shot PBT plastic instead of the generic ones in the V1 generation, which means the text on the keycaps is much harder wearing and the keys just feel more premium. If you wanna mix it up a bit, you can purchase additional keycap options from their website, including a shine through version, if you want the LEDs underneath to come through. The keycaps themselves are super easy to change. They come straight off with the included keycap puller. The LEDs can be customized and dimmed or just turned off to conserve battery life via keyboard shortcuts or software. Now you've probably noticed this pretty unique LED feature on either side of the keyboard. Usually they just display customizable lighting effects, but they do have quite a bit of functionality. The left side will display different colors depending on if caps lock is on and off and which connectivity method it's using. Either yellow for wired, blue for Bluetooth, or green for 2.4 gigahertz dongle. The right side is mainly for displaying battery levels. Personally, I used the keyboard shortcut FN plus forward slash to enable permanent battery level display. Or you can just jump into your Bluetooth settings on Mac OS and it displays it there too, which is something a lot of wireless keyboards don't usually support. Now, another big update with the V2 is that it now comes with QMK and VIA technology. Without going into too much depth here, this essentially means you can quickly jump into a basic web interface and customize everything on the keyboard, like key remapping every single key on the board to whatever you want, backlight effects, macros, layers to expand shortcuts and add additional functionality, and saving or exporting these profiles to use on other QMK VIA keyboards. You don't need proprietary software or drivers, it's all open source, unlike some of the other big players in this area, like Logitech, for example, with their bloated Logi Options software. Now, because this keyboard is only 75%, there's no additional shortcut buttons or dials or anything like that that I can actually use to map additional shortcuts or programs to. And that is where this console looking thing comes in that you've probably seen in the background of the B-roll of this video. It's the Loop Deck Live, and big thanks to Loop Deck also for sponsoring this section of the video. Now the Loop Deck is super handy because you can essentially map almost anything to it, and it's completely digital, so you're not limited by the physical buttons or knobs like you would be on a keyboard. This means I can map shortcuts or macros like launching a particular website with a tap of a button, or even using the QMK and VIA software on this keyboard paired with macros to toggle between different computers 
so I don't have to remember all the different keyboard shortcuts. And these customizable touchscreen buttons have haptic feedback when pressed. If you're a streamer, the Loop Deck is super handy. You can control everything live and it comes with the Streamlabs plugin. But I'm not a streamer, so instead I downloaded custom profiles for the apps I most commonly use, like DaVinci Resolve, Lightroom, or even Photoshop. And I can set up a ton of app-specific shortcuts across multiple pages and instantly adjust things like exposure or color temperature with the multi-function dials. It's a seriously powerful piece of kit. And if you want me to do a full review on it, let me know down in the comments below. But for now, if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link to the loop deck in the description of this video. Okay, let's talk about build quality now. So the actual chassis itself feels really solid. There's very little flex, even though it's mostly ABS plastic with an aluminum top. And the bottom has a slightly frosted design, so you can just make out the LEDs and internals inside. Now, all of you feet lovers out there are gonna love this one because a big gripe I had with the Air 75 V1 is that it had no feet. Just little rubber strips and some magnetic feet you could attach and then likely lose within a few days. The V2 on the other hand has built-in adjustable feet with two levels of adjustability. And these things are seriously solid. Just listen to this. On the side, there's a Windows and Mac toggle switch, a power button slash wired or wireless mode toggle, and a USB-C port for charging and connecting to your computer directly via a cable. It also has the same Bluetooth connectivity as the V1, allowing you to connect up to three computers and switch between them by holding the function key and pressing either one, two, or three on the keyboard. Now, one negative I did find is that on Bluetooth, uh, it'll actually take one or two seconds to wake up when I first start using it or when I start using it again after a period of inactivity. So I sometimes found myself starting to type and nothing would appear on the screen for a few seconds. I don't really think it's an issue and I was able to get around it by when I come back to my computer after a period of inactivity, instead of clicking the mouse button to wake up my computer, I just click the space button and that wakes up both the keyboard and the computer and I could just start typing straight away. Also a massive improvement with the V2 is now when you're connecting to your computer via the 2.4 gigahertz wireless USB dongle, you'll get the same 1000 hertz polling rate as if you were directly attaching the keyboard via a cable. A low polling rate is perfectly fine for typing and productivity tasks, but you'll want a higher polling rate for gaming, so your keystrokes are registered faster. For reference, most gaming keyboards advertise a polling rate of 1000 Hz. Now, if you don't game, you won't care about this, but if you do game, like I do, this is kind of a game changer. Excuse the pun. The Air 75 V1 and most other wireless non-gaming oriented keyboards have pretty crappy polling rates when connected wirelessly. For reference, the Air 75 V1 is actually five times slower at about 200 hertz polling rate compared to the V1 when using the dongle. Now, don't get me wrong, you can still game on these keyboards with lower polling rates, but for more competitive games, for example, like Warzone or Overwatch, where reloading and using the WASD keys to strafe or move around is super important, can have a pretty big impact. Now, the previous solution was to A, get a gaming oriented keyboard, which have their own issues, or B, when you are going to game using one of these keyboards, you have to get a cable and attach it directly to your computer, which kind of defeats the purpose of a wireless keyboard, right? But now, as long as you're using that 2.4G dongle, you'll get the same speeds as if you'd attached it directly. Personally, I have my V2 connected to my MacBook via Bluetooth for productivity tasks and to my custom built gaming PC via the wireless dongle. I can switch between them instantly via keyboard shortcuts. and I don't have any complaints about increased input lag or delay from key press to action on screen when gaming. Now the V2's battery is also 60% larger than the V1. Nufi claims around 220 hours with the backlight off, which is around a month of battery life, assuming you use the keyboard for eight hours a day. With the backlight on, it's much less, about a quarter of that. So personally, I just keep the backlight off and use a monitor screen bar to light my desk and keyboard. Going under the keycaps, Nufi gives you a good range of switches to choose from. Either gather on low profile 2.0 reds, browns, or blues, or Nufi's own custom switches, for example, 
aloe, cowberry, wisteria, and moss. Now, switch choice is really up to the individual. There's not really a one size fits all. And while you can research the switches and listen to typing tests on Nufi's website, for example, the only way that you're gonna be able to tell for sure which one you like best is by physically using it and typing on it yourself. So honestly, just pick one you think you'll like best and then use the samples Nufi gives you in the box. And if you find one you like more, you can just easily swap to it because the keyboard is hot swappable and comes with the necessary tool. Personally, I have the Daisy switches. Here's what they sound like. Now the overall typing experience is really solid. I mean, Nufi has done a lot of work on the inside and added things like sound deadening material, lube stabilizers, and obviously the double shot PBT keycaps as well. So the sound and feel under your fingertips is just really nice. And it's not cheap or clacky like some other alternatives out there. And yes, those function keys work perfectly with macOS. I can change volume or brightness, for example, with zero issues. Now, if you're worried about these 75% layout being too cramped, personally, I actually found it was the opposite. I found myself missing keys while I was typing. I think the actual surface area of the keycaps on this keyboard are sort of a little bit bigger than other keyboards, such as the Magic Keyboard from Apple. Um, so it kind of took me out a week to get used to it, but now I kind of think that I prefer the larger keycaps. So I guess the big question is, should you buy this keyboard? Currently it's priced at 119 US dollars or $107 if you use my 10% off code. I'll also leave a link to that in the description down below. But how does that price stack up to the competition? Some popular wireless keyboard alternatives in this form factor are the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, Logitech MX Mechanical Mini, or the Keychron K3 Pro. However, with the exception of the Keychron, all of those options are more expensive and have less functionality. Now, I do plan on doing a full comparison video where I go into more detail, but for me, the big differences between the Air 75 V2 and these other popular alternatives is the very good build quality and premium mechanical typing experience, the customizability with hot swappable switches and QMK VIA support, as well as that 1000 Hz polling rate on the 2.4 GHz dongle. Not to mention Nufi's custom switches add another level of choice that you don't really get with the alternatives. So overall, I am pretty impressed with this keyboard. It just seems to get everything right without any major compromises. For me personally, that 1000 Hz polling rate with the USB dongle is the biggest single selling point because it solves a big issue I had with other similar wireless keyboards, namely having to plug them in when I wanted to game. I think if you already have the V1, the V2 probably isn't worth upgrading to unless you really want the QMK VIA support and the 1000 Hertz polling rate. But for 107 bucks, you really cannot get anything better right now in the wireless mechanical 75% keyboard space at least in my opinion, and after spending several months testing out all the big competitors to this guy. But apart from that, if you have any questions, let me know down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.